some cutting technique and also a little bit of color placement, but I just want to say to you guys how glad you can upload that. You can how glad that we are you guys to be here with you guys on Hair Brain. We're so excited and um, we're just gonna keep this very conversational, all right? So if you guys have any questions, we got Trixie in the background. She's gonna be doing the camera work. She's also gonna be relaying any questions that you guys have, but feel free you guys to be a very interactive session with us. Um, as you can see, we put on here that we hate COVID. I think that you guys probably do, do too at this time. We're coming from Minneapolis, Minnesota. We're actually at the first launch of Healing Center uh, all over the country and the world, actually. So, and we are not scheduled to reopen right now until June 1st. So, I know that there's a lot of places all over the country that have reopened already. Hopefully, you guys are doing great. You have COVID everything as well. You guys can tell us how things are going because we're going to experience that hopefully on June 1st if it doesn't get pushed back any longer. Margo, what would you think? Yeah, yeah. So thanks for joining us today, guys. Um, two things that we're going to dive into. So I'm going to be showing some blonde techniques. Um, I don't know. I know a lot of you guys are open, and I really think that we're going to be seeing a lot of people that are overgrown, right? So I'm going to show you a couple techniques that's going to help you be faster behind the chair because I don't know what the situation looks like for you once you go back to work, but we're not going to have as much time, right? And people are going to want to be blonde. They're, they're going to want a big change. So I'm going to show you a couple different techniques that will help you achieve that. Yep. And I'm going to show you guys a haircut, a mid-length haircut, all right? So lots of things that we've seen for the last couple of years is very, very blunt, heavy perimeters, all right? So we've seen those lobs and bobs be very, very blunt without a lot of graduation and layering, okay? But what we recently see come back in is a lot of shags, all right? And the thing about it is that maybe a lot of people are like, oh my God, the haircut's so cute and so great, looks so great on, on, on when you're taking pictures of it and stuff like that. But lots of times when you're doing it though, people are a little too scared that they don't want to have these like little frayed ends and maybe like, you know, like no hair at the perimeter. So I'm gonna combine the two and show you guys a haircut that Hopefully, can introduce people to maybe going a shave route. Okay, so there's going to be a lot of layering, but there's also going to be a pretty heavy perimeter. Okay, so I'm going to start get started. Um, Trixie, you can man the camera here, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you guys how I get into this haircut right away. You can pick it up. Yeah, we're going to And I think that's a good point that you make because when people come back, I feel like everybody's going to want a huge change, right? So people are going to like, give me a shave, give me all these layers, but I don't think they realize how much of a commitment that is. So I think this haircut that Mark is going to do is a really great way to give them that, that big change, but, you know, it's still going to be manageable. Really well. All right, cool. All right, so you guys, I'm going to start actually within the fringe area, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to see where the fringe lives. Usually, the way you can tell where the fringe lives is that you can put a comb right at the top of where their hair starts, or their, I'm sorry, their head starts to uh, bend, that's as far back as you can take the top of the perimeter. I'm gonna take that at a diagonal back section to the back of the ear on both sides, and I'm gonna clip that off. And that is basically gonna be my perimeter. I need to you have any person? Perfect. So, I'm gonna take that on this side, I don't know if you can see it over here, I'll show you guys on the other side here. So, this is where the top of the fringe lives. I'm going to do a diagonal back to the back of the ears. You can see right there, you guys. I'm going to take that section and completely push that out. Perfect. All right, so you can see now where the fringe lives. You want to get over here, Trixie, and see right in front. So what I'm going to do, you guys, I'm going to take a small section on both sides of the part. I'm going to pump that straight down and see where I want her perimeter to live, all right? So, as I see where I want the perimeter to live, I'm gonna be about right here. I'm gonna actually elevate it towards me, and I'm gonna start cutting for the guideline of where her fringe is gonna live. Why I'm elevating it is because I want it to be very soft. We know that when you elevate it, it's gonna create some graduation, okay? So, that is my perimeter right there. I'm gonna start moving on this side. And usually I cut straight down, but I'm going to elevate it because I want it to be a lot softer, giving it that graduation. There's my perimeter. We'll start cutting right there. Can you see? Because that's where her face frame is. So I'm going to do this on this side, and I'm going to do the other side. Margo, what do you got going on? All right, guys. So I'm going to do two different techniques um, on the side of the head, but. 
Anytime that I am parting hair for any sort of oil service, I like to part out the front section and then the back section as one. Well. So when I'm parting it here, I'm taking the part right by the back of the ear to the high point of the head. So clients where they want to see the most likeness is usually around the face, right? So this oil placement that I'm going to do, I'm going to start on a diagonal and I usually always do a hairline oil, whether I'm doing balayage, any sort of color service that I'm doing, I usually always give them that, um, that hairline oil around the outside so they have that brightness and that diffusion when they pull it back. So I'm going to start by doing that at a diagonal and then as I move up the head, I'm going to start pivoting on the horizontal. And what that's going to do is the diagonal is going to give it the softness and as I pivot up on the horizontal, that's going to give us more coverage. So on horizontal, you're going to get more of like a sheet of color, a sheet of blonde going down. So this way I can do less oils and get the maximum uh, amount of lightness out of it. So I'll go ahead and start doing that, and we'll go back and see what works together. If you want to go over your tricks, um, you guys saw that I did what I was on this side of her head. I could use the guideline and go from guideline to where I wanted to finish, right? But on this side of the head, obviously because I'm right-handed, it's going to be a little bit different. I would have to go from trying to meet my guideline right here, okay? But I always want to go from guideline to where I want to finish. So what I'm going to do then, you guys, is grab the hair. I already cut some of this for you. Grab the hair here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand here. I'm going to make an X right with my other wrist, and then I'm going to create where I can go from guideline to where I want to finish just by creating that X with my hand. Pick my last section here. Remember that I'm, I'm graduating it up, so that's why I'm elevating it right here to give it that more softness that I want. And then I'm gonna come through here and cut the rest of my face frame layers. And you can see there how nice it sits. And I'm just gonna clean it up just a little bit. Perfect, all right. So you guys, I'm gonna release these clips here. Remember I sectioned that, that fringe area from her, where her fringe lives, where that round is at the top of her head, and did a diagonal back to the back of the ear, okay? I'm gonna let go of these clips. Now I'm gonna start with her layering, you guys. So haircuts, I think, you know, I feel that people tend to overthink haircuts and it makes them more difficult than they are. And the reality of it is, you guys, there's only four different haircuts, all right? There's a blunt, one length, which we're going to do later on. And then there's graduation, there's layering, and then there's disconnection, all right? So within this haircut, actually, I'm going to use three of the principles, right? I'm going to use graduation, I'm going to use layering, and also create a, a, a zero degree perimeter, okay? So you guys saw that guideline that I used right here within, within her fringe. I'm going to use that guideline then to create her layers, okay? So I'm going to take it about half an inch on both sides apart and I'm going to elevate this completely straight up. And I'm going to create a concave layer so it's back and flowing. So there's going to be a little bit more length to the back than there is to the front. I'm going to use her perimeter right there as my guideline. And I'm going to start cutting. This is my guideline for the rest of my layers and my haircut that you guys. And then I'm going to start going in high sections all around her head and create those layers starting back all the way up. And as you guys can notice that I'm using this on dry hair, okay? I like cutting on dry hair, one, because I can create those layers and I can create my guidelines very easily, but I can also texturize at the same time. So as you guys can see while I'm cutting this, I'm cutting big point cuts at an angle, okay? So all I'm doing that, I'm also creating my guideline and my layers. I'm also creating my texturizing at the same time. So if we finish off on this side of the head, then I will move to the other side of the head. Alrighty guys, so as I'm working up the head, like I said, I'm gonna start moving up onto a horizontal. So I started on my diagonal and now I'm shifting up onto my horizontal. Now, a lot of what we're going to see, and whether this be a balayage retouch, a foil retouch, well, let's say that her blonde, or her ends, are already white, okay? So, we're going to paint down, let's just say she has her line of demarcation, was about right there. And then, I'm going to pull out her ends like this. And then, I'm going to fold up my foil, 
And I like to give it one full. I don't like to crease it much more than that because that can cause like uneven lifting inside of the foil. So I like to give it one fold like that, and then I'm just gonna tuck it in just like that. And now I'm gonna leave this tail up because since it's been so long since she's been in for a glaze or a color, the ends of her blondes are a little bit dingy and I still wanna fold some brightness through that, but it doesn't need the decolorizer to sit on the full time that it does in the foil. So I'm simply gonna keep those ends peeking out like that. And then after I move up the head, I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna paint on the ends just to brighten up those ends with a clay decolorizer. And then as I'm working up, once we get to her recession, I'm gonna go back and do the same foil pattern here, how I went on a diagonal, to the horizontal to make sure that I'm following her hair line up there. Awesome, if you guys have any questions, please let us know. So give us a shout out, let us know where you're from, all right? Because we are up here in Minneapolis, actually it's a gorgeous day today, but usually it's very cold. We love hearing the other temperatures though from other places because we're always like, oh, it's freezing here, but today's actually a nice day. It's, about, it's gonna be about 75 degrees here today. So we don't have a question, but someone says if you, Mark, move your manic if you mannequin next to the wall, there'll be less echo. So I think maybe you're less echo. Well, possibly echoing. Well, we have a huge empty space here, yeah. so I will say that. Like our, I'm sorry about the echo, but our salon is quite large. How about this? I'm going to go a little bit this way. How's that? How's that? Let us know if that's better. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> okay, you guys. I, I did her, if you remember if I did her, her, her layering, now, if we think about what layering is, we just think about layering is removing weight, all right? Now we're gonna start getting into our graduation, okay? Graduation for me is just where you want that weight to live, okay? So I was thinking about hair cutting and where how hair lives in, in this way within graduation, all right? So graduation, anything that you cut from here on down, you're graduating, all right? Anything you're cutting from here on up, you're layering, all right? So, Making sure that we're getting into these principles and knowing exactly what we're doing, okay? So, I'm gonna do my graduation part. I did her layering already. So I'm gonna take a section straight up the back of her head. And what I like to do is I like to create the layer, and then I like to create the graduation, and then I like to meet the two, all right? So, take the hair straight out here at a complete horizontal. And I'm going to cut that square. And as you can see, I'm getting in there, I'm creating my graduation, but I'm also texturizing at the same time. I'm going to take the same section, you guys, and move it up at 45 and meet where I did my layering. And you can see I'm doing deep point cuts, giving it a lot of texture. And I'm going to move from one side of the head to the other, so I was straight behind and now I'm moving to the left side of her head, pulling it straight out where it lives. I'm gonna create that square graduation. And then I'm gonna pull it up at a 45 and meet my layering. I love doing this technique because I can bang out basically two different areas of where I cut in just one section. So, keep on moving around the head and then I'll move the other way. Right now I'm getting towards the back of the ear you guys, and I wanna make sure that I'm over directing them to that back of the ear. Making sure that I have that leeway and space of hair to make sure that we have at least that heaviness in front. Okay, so now I'm moving up here. I did the hairline, so now I got to the hairline and I'm gonna go back to my diagonal. And now I'm gonna start pivoting back to a horizontal until I get to the first line. Now, uh, two points I wanna make here is, first of all, when using a brush, I really like to use this Lanza one here has, um, I don't know if you can tell with like the, the uh, decolorizer on it, but it almost has like a tapered end, so it's really gonna give me that softness. And what that's going to do is allow me to take a little bit bigger sections, so then when I go up and feather into it, I won't have as hard of a line. So I love using that. I'm using a powder decolorizer on her today um, from Lanza. I love this decolorizer. It really gives me maximum brightness. And I think one thing I was talking to Mark about, like I have so many blondes that are so blonde, but they're not quite bleaching bones, but they're so blonde. And they're in all the time getting full foils. And I can't talk them out of it. But now, you know, when they come back, it's gonna be a good conversation that we can have with them that, look, if you wanna see your blondes pop a little bit more, you have to have that depth and that darkness. So now that they'll have a little bit more um, 
outgrowth in between their foil, we're going to have those pockets of depth that are in here that's going to make those pieces really pop. So using this foil technique, I can really use minimal foils and get them the maximum lightness that I can in less time. And yeah, and you guys, if you guys haven't used the Lonzo Decolor, I, I implore you to try it, all right? It's already got a blue base to it, so it's going to make sure that it knocks out any of that yellowness. Right now, you said you're using powder. I'm using powder. Yeah, and we have actually have four four different types of decolorizers. We have a powder decolorizer, we have a cream decolorizer, and then we also have a... Give me the other three. We have a, a new Ultra Blonde yep. decolorizer, so yep. it lifts, lifts up to nine levels, you guys. It's incredible. And then we also have a clay decolorizer, and you're going to be using I will show, right? Yep, I will showcase the clay decolorizer on the other half of the back for anybody who loves doing those open air body with the clay decolorizer. Um, so Mark, you have a question. Um, do you usually cut dry? Well, I usually cut dry. You know what? And when I start, first started doing hair, which is about like 12 years ago, um, up until probably about like six years ago, I never cut dry. I always cut on wet hair. But Right now, I've been doing a lot of dry cuts, A, because I've been doing a lot of show work and that's what you need to do it on, but then also I've learned that it has a lot of advantages, all right? So the advantages for me is that I can actually see where the hair lives, all right? So one thing that you have to learn, and one of the biggest rules is that wet hair lies, all right? It doesn't tell you the truth, all right? Dry hair will always tell you the truth. Um, but, it, you know, there's certain hair that calls for it, there's certain times that it doesn't call for it, but I don't always cut dry. And another point, I don't know um, how other states and salons are doing it, but when we reopen, we are actually not going to be offering blow drying services. Um, so we're going to ask that clients come in with clean, dry hair, and we're going to be doing dry cuts on them. What that's going to do is, again, cut down the time that they're in our chair, and then also, I mean, if there's any chance of um, the virus being blown around by the, the blow dryer, it's going to cut that down as well. So. Moving back up, now her ends are already light, but I'm gonna pull a little more, so I pull right to where I, I put the decolorizer on to, leave the tail out. I'm gonna give her one nice little fold to tuck her in, and tuck it in right like that. Now, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you, this is when you could utilize our clay decolorizer or even our cream decolorizer. Our lines are Okay, time out. Um, just slow down a little bit right. on how fast you're talking. So. Our cream decolorizer, that um, it's going to be the most gentle of all of our decolorizers. So as we go through, I'm going to use our cream decolorizer on the end. So she's already previously blonde, okay? So I need a really gentle decolorizer. I'm going to use it with our Demi developer. And I'm actually going to utilize our Lanza um, board to paint on. So, we do have another question for you. Uh, how wide are the foils, would you say? So, two inches wide. So they're going to look wider because I'm not tucking in this side. But I try to not go too much past the round of the head. So I would say about two inches wide. Now I'm going to take my board and I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to paint on with my cream decolorizer, pulling the tail out to where you see that decolorizer there. And about the last 10 minutes, I'm just going to paint on those tails. And what that's going to do is just bump up the brightness of our balayage and really help kick out some of that almost like urban dust that's been building up on her hair while she's in quarantine and she hasn't <laughs> been able to get in and get her glazed up. Urban dust. Right? I like that too. <laughs> All right, I'm going to you guys, one thing that you've noticed so far, so I've already done her face print, I've already done her layering, and then I did her graduation, and then I met the graduation up to the layering. One thing that I haven't done yet is I have not created her perimeter yet, okay? I actually like to leave the perimeter out last lots of times because the reason why is that if you create your perimeter first, I find that you can tend to get boxed in, especially with bobs, you get boxed in on where your graduation or your layering lives, right? So I like to create other things first and then I will create the perimeter, okay? So I'm gonna go down here, you guys. And as you can see, I sectioned her off, so she's got a lot of hair, but I'm going to do, I'm not going to use my fingers. Lots of people like to use their fingers when they cut. The only thing about that is that you're not creating a true zero degree uh, blunt cut, right? Because every time that you use your fingers, you're going to be creating some type of graduation or elevation or over direction, okay? So if you want to use a comb, that's perfectly fine because the combs are machine made and not man made. So I'm just going to take my comb and I'm just going to place it 
exactly where I want to cut, okay? And I'm going to cut right directly below it. And this is my, like I said earlier, this is going to be my mid-length haircut, okay? Go in here, knock out this perimeter, and as you can see, you guys, I'm always down closest to where I can see at eye level. Go from one side to the other side, and then I'm going to drop the rest of her hair. I'll probably do two more sections. She's, she's got a ton of hair right here, so I'm going to do this section, and then one more to create the perimeter. Alright, so now she's ready to process and look how quick and easy that was. I only put in about 10 foils here and then leaving these ends out, painting on the decolorizer to help bump up the brightness on the ends there. And that's also going to help with a neat application so it's not quite as messy. Good stuff? Good stuff. Alright, so on the other side, I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit of a hand painting technique with our clay decolorizer. Using the sim a similar placement where we're going to be going on a diagonal up to a horizontal, but still leaving those pockets of depth. So let's dive into that. And then, Mark, uh, you have a question. How did you establish the length? You know what? I just eyed it. To be <laughs> honest, I mean, I eye a lot of things. I like, eye a lot of my layering, I eye a lot of my graduation. But the reason why is because I don't like to keep it standard because I want to make sure that what I'm cutting is customized to my client that's in my chair, okay? So, Lots of times I don't have like it's like it's not like oh you must cut you know three inches below the nape or something like that or you must cut five inches below the nape. I want to I actually like to look at their face and look at them in the mirror. Obviously I don't have a mirror in front of me right now, but Trixie is my mirror, <laughs> and um, she's gonna tell me that if that looks at a good length. And for me to see the um, for me like I said I want this like mid length haircut. It's gonna stay a little bit long, but like I said. The reason that I'm creating this, you guys, is that I'm creating a haircut that is almost shag-like because we're seeing a lot of shags coming back, but also still have a very blunt trigger. So it's a lot of those clients that, to be honest, that can't wear shags, this might be a great haircut for them. Because we all know, you guys, we see these beautiful shags, and they're really cute on these really, really young girls, but we get anybody, you know, maybe that's not as young, and we don't style it every single day, it could look like one of those haircuts that you see at the supermarket and you're like, WTF is that? <laughs> so, I'm just saying, this might help you out a little bit because it's still going to have a very blunt perimeter, but it's still going to have the softness and the roundness of what a shag is with a lot of layering and texture. Creating my last cuts of my perimeter. And as you can see, you guys, I'm not using any implements. I'm just using her hair as it is combed straight down. And I'm getting the last sections over here. And I want to know, you guys, do you think that we should create a fringe on her? Yay. Would anybody like to see a fringe? How I cut that? Fringe, fringe. Fringe, fringe. Well, while people go, Margaret, why don't you talk about <laughs> So this Healing Blonde Pre-Boost Treatment. What this treatment is, is it's a spray that you're going to put onto the hair prior to any decolorizing surface. What it's going to do is it's going to help speed up your lightening process. Now, if you're not a Lonzo decolorizer user, you can actually use this with any lightning. So it's going to help maximize your lifting process. And another thing I like about it is it's going to help give the hair a little bit more slip. So I, am, I like to do my balayages on a little bit of a damp hair or even just spraying this product under the hair. So you're going to take the sections, spray generously onto all of the hair and comb it through. Now another thing that's great about this product is it's going to help keep the integrity of the hair. So we, what do we know about lightener? You put it on the hair, it goes in there and it eats, right? So it goes in there opens that cuticle and it starts to eat away at the melanin in the hair. So what we're doing is spraying this on. This has a vitamin C plex plus complex in it and that's going to help keep the integrity of the hair and direct the lightener to go in there and eat away at the pigments in the hair and not the proteins. So I'm going to spray that on generously like that and comb it through. And like I did before, I'm going to start taking my section at a diagonal. 
And I always like to make sure that at the back of the ear, you can see right here, right in the front of the ear, I always wanna make sure that I have lightness right on that piece there. So I'm gonna start working up and doing this and we can bounce back to Mark and see what he's doing over there. All right. So, yes, I obviously I blue dry this girl earlier. I a chef food or a blue dryer. On about 99% of my clients, I like to use a, a combination of either our keratin healing oil or our defrizz cream. And this basically our defrizz cream is a cream version of our oil. That's how I like to explain it, okay? And the reason why I like to use these is because it's going to give me that protection of heat. It's also going to give me that nice slip that I need to make sure that her hair is smooth and glossy, okay? And then I also you like to use a combination of our design foam, all right? This is gonna give it the lightness and airiness and also some texture that she needs when you go and style her hair. So those are the products that I like to use from going from wet to dry. But here's the thing, somebody asked earlier if I cut all of my cuts on dry hair. I would say about like 40%, but now because of what where it's happening all over the country and all over the world is this COVID thing that we all know is that lots of salons are opening in different ways, including us. We're actually opening June 1st, and we are going to be eliminating blow drying for at least a couple of weeks. We'll see how long we need to do that, but we're eliminating just to make sure that we are doing the essential things. So lots of people that cut on dry hair, one of the biggest things is that the hair gets staticky. Right? It gets really staticky when they cut. If you use something like our smooth down spray here, and if you coat your brush with it, you guys, this is a great way to eliminate any type of frizz and then also any type of static when you are going through and cutting on dry hair. And it, this stuff smells amazing, but this is a great little trick that I learned here actually from Margot Therese over here. So, Go in and make sure that you, if you have any type of smooth down spray, just spray it on your, your brush and then when you brush your hair out, it'll make sure all that static stays away, okay? I don't know if anybody wanted or voted that they wanted to see a print. They want to see a fringe. They want to see a fringe. I'm going to show you how I do my fringe, all right? Can I just make a couple points yes. real quick before you start on that? Go okay. Ahead. So I just want to show you guys, I'm on my second section here, and I'm not leaving any hair in between, because what's happening is as I'm pivoting, if you can zoom into this a little bit over here, um, this corner here, it's going to be almost like a triangle, so this part's not going to have as much lightness. I'm painting on the surface of the hair, as you can see, once I get up to here. Now one thing with clay to colorizer, I think is very important, you guys, is don't be afraid to use a lot. Almost feel like you're icing a cake, like you think you have enough, go in and go a little bit heavier with it because what it needs to do is stay wet on the inside so that way it has the maximum lifting. Also, when you're doing this balayage, make sure that you're staying on the hair and skating with it. Don't jump around. That way you get a nice slip and nice even peaks and valleys. Now if you go in and you accidentally see you get like a little spot right there, make sure that you guys go back and blend it out. This clay to colorizer is pretty forgiving, so just make sure that you go on there and really work it into the hair just like that. And then I use these um, Lanza reusable films to help separate my sections there. And that way I don't get any lightener on her face as well. So I'll just show the next section and I'll keep going. And we can go back to Mark. So as see as I pivot up and I start to go more to a horizontal, I'm going to her recession. So if this makes sense, you guys, taking the section here, it's going to be wider towards the back. And then pulling my section down horizontally. All right, let's... Dive into that fringe, Mr. Dolan. Okay, so you guys, I'm, I'm sectioning out her fringe right now, and if you guys want like a basic key of where a fringe lies, it's basically from where her, the head rounds in the front to the recessions on both sides of her face. And you can see where that recession is. That's a basic principle of where the fringe lies, okay, on both sides of the head. So, I'm going to go through here. What I like to do, you guys, I like to take a little section in between the part to create my guideline for my fringe, all right? So, it's almost like a little triangle on both sides of the part. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go, I'm going to go this way. Oops. <laughs> so, what I like to do is I like to take this and find where I want that fringe to start. And I'm going to probably do right about her nose, okay? So, I know that that's where I want it to start. 
So what I'm gonna do then is directly pull that straight up. Why I'm doing this, you guys, is that I'm creating an undercut. And the reason why I'm creating an undercut is because I want the top of the hair to be longer than the interior of the hair, okay? So the reason why I do that is because we all know a basic principle about hair is that shorter hair pushes longer hair. So lots of people, when they want that nice sweeping, that curtain fringe, they don't get that sweeping curtain switch, uh, fringe because it's too heavy. So if you create this undercut, it's gonna automatically take that under hair that's gonna wanna push that hair that's on top of it to one side or the other, okay? So that's how you'll create then that sweeping fringe. Uh, you have a question, yes. Mark. Uh, if a side part, you begin on the part? Yes, yes, totally. And, if, and it depends on like if they always if they always side part it, if they're not. If they don't always side part it, then I would completely still, like I would go straight from the middle, all right? So you guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna over direct this completely straight up, all right? And because of how her hair lives, it's going to automatically be longer on the edges than it is going to be on the interior. So as you can see here, where her guideline is, is wait, oh, there it is. It's right there, you guys, right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my shears and I'm just going to shatter out this fringe. And the reason why I'm shattering it is because I want to give it that nice texture. And it's also going to be a very free fringe, not such a solid, blunt fringe that we, won't, we, don't, want to, we don't want to create that because that's not what we're seeing these days right now, especially for these, this type of haircut. I'm just going to go in through here then and do a little bit of texturizing. And as you see she's over here, Trixie, even though I created a complete horizontal cut, it's already got an angle that that's what we want. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Move it directly up. And even though you guys, I'm creating a complete horizontal cut, because of how the hair lives, it's gonna be longer on this side than it is in the interior. There's my guide right there. Go in here and just shatter out this hair. A lot of hair color, huh? Now I'm going to create my texturizing in here. I'm going to drop this out. And as you can see here, you guys, how we've already created that angle just because of how that hair lives. And that's going to give me that nice sweeping curtain fringe that I want to see. I'm going to go in through here, you guys, and texturize the rest of her hair. I like to do this one technique. I'll show you here. I'm going to start in the back of her head here. And I want this hair to move a lot. And the way, way, lots of reasons why hair doesn't move is because right, right here, this interior part, not the top and not the bottom, but this interior part, that is where the hair, if we don't see it moving, that's because that part is the most heaviest. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, you have a question. Uh, what scissors are you using? I am using you guys. It's a very good question. I love these shears. Uh, these are my ARC 7-inch Paragon Swords. So it's a company called ARC. And it's a, it's a dynamite shirt, you guys. So look into ARC. They have lots of different kinds. Um, but this is what this is one of my favorites to use. So I'm going to go in through here, you guys, and watch me. This is this interior that I'm going to do. And what I'm doing, you guys, I'm not cutting on the way in. I'm cutting on the way out. The reason why I'm cutting on the way out is because I want to make sure that I secure the integrity of that cuticle, all right? If I were to go in, it's just going to rip apart that hair. Move around the head while you're doing this, and then I kind of like quit 
Basically, I don't go anywhere past the ear when I do this type of technique. Alright, I'll do one more section and then we'll move it over to Margo. If you guys see this, I, if I wanted to go slow so you can see how I'm doing it slow. Do you know does arc make swivels? I'm assuming that's what this question they, they means. They do not. Okay. So they do not. They do not. So if you guys see, I'm just going here, if I was doing a slow motion, I'm just doing little cuts as I'm pulling out. But for me, it's a lot easier if I can do it faster. All right, I'll move to the other side of the head. We move on to Margo, what she's doing. All right guys, so just still moving up the head. I moved over then like I did on the previous section and on her hairline took diagonal partings and then started connecting them and pivoting back to a horizontal. And um, you guys can decide based on like your clients wants and needs. Um, I want to keep her a little bit more rooty up through the top so she has that natural lived in look. So as you can see I'm going to paint as close as I can up to the scalp around the face but then as I'm starting to drop back my sections here I'm not going to paint quite as far up on the back end of it. So that way it gives it a little more depth. And if you guys missed it before, I did prep her hair with this blonde pre-boost treatment. Um, I'm gonna spray it back on again because she's getting a little dry. What this treatment here is going to do is um, help speed up the decolorizing process while keeping the integrity of the hair. And it's also gonna give me that nice slip. So when I'm applying my clay decolorizer, I can really work it on there. Now I like to pinch the ends of the hair, get it nice and tight down here. If you guys, I know there's a lot of people out there that are, they're scared to use a clay to colorizer. I strongly encourage you to do it. It's not as scary as it looks and it's really fun actually. So putting it on the brush, same, um, I'm using the same brush that I was using before by Lanza, only this one is a little bit longer. So as you can tell, it has that tapered end. Same with balayages, I love a brush that has a good tapered end. And then I like the bristles to be a little bit longer when I'm doing a open air balayage. So I'm gonna keep it clean, just putting the product on the tip of my brush. And then I'm gonna start by going in. And I wanna get close up to her scalp there and bring it down. And then I'm still gonna put a couple of V's and W's in there, but dropping it down and letting that depth of her root really shine through. Now, like I said before, skating on the hair here, getting a nice smooth transition so that you don't have those spots in there. I like to say, I don't think I've heard you say skating on the hair before. That's good, I like that. Yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know what else to say. Just kind of brushing it on. I, like I said, I always think of it like icing a cupcake. Using my board then, so that way I can grab the ends in. Placing my decolorizer on the hair. And I'm gonna show you guys one other little trick. If you guys, like I said before, if you ever see any spots, there's nothing worse when you go to rinse out a balayage and you see a big spot and you're like, damn, I should have fixed that. So. Let's say I have, you know, I got a little bit too heavy handed right there. Whoops. If you take, no. yeah, oops. <laughs> if you take your tail comb here and you can simply just kind of brush that out a little bit and separate that hair. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely make sure you guys go back and just make sure that you have a clean application. So that's going to be the biggest thing that's going to deter you away from ever wanting to do an open air balayage again. So, I'm so you have a question. Um, will the board create a line underneath section? So that's a great question. So the question is, when I'm painting on, will it create a line underneath? I'm going to show you guys the underneath of the hair when I do this section. It potentially could, but the thing is, there's already decolorizer on the board, and I'm going to show you this little flip that I like to do with the board to make sure that I don't get a line from it. And then also, how do you make sure it's inside the part you pinched? Um, how do you make sure it's inside the part you pinched when you were pinching it? Oh, inside, so great question. So meaning how do I fully saturate that pinched part? So that's why I use the board because the board's gonna give me tension, right? So I can push the product through. Now you see that? Her ends, like at most people's hair at the ends, you're not gonna have a lot of it. So it's definitely gonna be all fully saturated and through the ends. That's why I use the board, because up here, I don't want the lightness as you, you whoa, whoa. what's going oh. on with this thing? Sorry, we have a 
Okay. Okay. So if you guys can see underneath here, the lightener's not going all the way through. I'm just surface painting, right? And then as I get towards the bottom, I'm pushing it in. Now the question was, will I get a line from the board? So I have the decolorizer on here and I'm going to pick up the hair like this and place it back down on the board. So now when you see underneath, can you get under there, Trix? Now see how there's a soft transition there? Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to get the bottom of it as well. So by using your brush, holding the hair, pulling the board out, and then placing it back on there and painting down. And then I placed another one of these films in front of her face. And I was like, you know what, it kind of, she has even more face protection. Our clients will be used to that. So we got some more use out of these little films here. Little face shields. So, and then at the top, I'm gonna leave, uh, where her part is, I'm gonna leave this to be a little bit of a veil. So it kind of gives us our security blanket and we have that little bit of darkness here. So as we go back, we started pivoting up. And as you can see, that's gonna give us all these pockets of depth and really give us that great dimension. When we rinse it out, you can glaze it. Um, you can do an all over global glaze, or you can even go back through and do a color melt situation um, using a couple different tones and melting it down. But now we have all of the ends, maximum lightness. Took me maybe five, 10 minutes to apply, super quick. Hey Mark, yes. um, could you get that thing back? No. Okay. Well, I'm like really shaky. No, I'm like Alright guys, so I'm doing my little lived in waves right now. So what I do is I like to go from the base all the way to the ground. So I'll do a little bit of a twist and turn at the top. And then I'm gonna drop that out as you can see. And I'm just gonna move down the hair. So <clears throat> one of the key things is this is you guys you guys see there's tension to what I'm using, the iron. Making sure you have that tension is gonna make sure that she doesn't have little uh, Susie Q ringlets in her hair, okay? So that's these lived in wa waves that we've been seeing. So we'll go to the top, do one revolution. I'll drop that out, keeping tension. I move down the hair shaft. And I drop that out. And then I'm going to use my clamp as almost like a flat iron just to make sure that it goes through the ends and finishes those ends, okay? So I haven't done her fringe yet. I think a lot of people don't. They get like, how, about, how do I style the fringe, you know? And I showed this to Margo the other day and she was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So as you can see, I'm doing regular waves here. I'm gonna start with this side here, guys. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the whole fringe and I'm gonna pull it to where it lives and then I'm gonna go underneath and I'm just gonna let the iron go through. I love that. You see that? All right, do, I'll show you once more on this side and then because it's a little bit different on the other side, all right? So, going underneath, just lightly press, don't press hard, and just let the iron do the work, okay? Let's go on the other side here. And well, I left one out here. So on this side here, you guys, one revolution, drop it out, tension. Drop it out, tension, and I'm just gonna let it slip through the ends of that iron, all right? So over here, here's our fringe here. I'm gonna grab the whole thing, come from underneath, and I'm just gonna let the iron do the work. Do it once more here. iron do the work so then we got our nice then lived in fringe with our sweeping bang all right all right so why mark's gonna continue um on to the back sections curling um shammy has a question about our glazes and toners so um within um we use lanza uh, healing color so we have a couple different options for glazing and toning we recently added on a new line our liquids so that's going to be our deposit only demi gloss which is a great way to glaze clients add a ton of shine um, we also can glaze within our uh, healing colors so if you guys don't know anything about Lanza we actually have a three-in-one system so with one tube of color you can actually um, change up whether you want it 
permanent, demi-permanent, or semi-permanent um, just by changing the developer. So we have a translucent catalyst that we actually add to our hair color that helps render the ammonia 99.9%. .9%. So then we can use it as a glaze when going back through. Um, I like to do them after I shampoo at the bowl. When I'm doing a color melt situation, I like to rinse them out, shampoo at the bowl, and then I bring them back to the chair and do a color melt at the chair. So. And so one thing you guys, uh don't know about if you don't know our color at all is that that's the biggest thing that uh, I would say is the difference maker within our color is that you have three in one technology like Marvel says Marvel says you can get three different applications out of it but what is that going to do for you it's going to save lots and lots of inventory space a ton of inventory space so for all you booth renters out there I know I've done that back in my day and you get one little cupboard to fit everything so um, I that's one of the main reasons why I switched to Lanza back when I did, and um, it definitely keeps the inventory costs low, um, and then just gives you a lot more options to be customizable within your coloring, so. All right, I'm getting to my last session, guys. I always do the first, the front right and the front left first because that's what people look at, <laughs> to be honest. They don't really care about the back, so I can do those perfectly and then I can get in the back, and if I'm running out of time, let's say I'm being customer time, I can run to the back pretty easily. I just need to get some movement then out of the back a little bit, okay? All right, so Angela, you have a question. Where can you go to see how to use our products step-by-step? Step? So make sure that you're following um, Lanza on Instagram. Um, and also, we have a wonderful website. I think it's just... Uh, lanza.com. Uh, I think Michael's on here. He can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, there's a ton of videos and certifications on there. Um, explains all of our products. So make sure that you guys check that out. Also, if you follow my Instagram, I do quite a bit of product sharing. And my Instagram is margo, M-A-R-G-O dot Therese, T-E-R-E-S-E. Um, and then we have one more question from Monica. How's the longevity of the color? You guys, it's incredible. So like I said before, it's Lanza healing color, right? So healthy hair will hold, ha will hold a hair color a lot longer. So the longevity is gonna be there. Um, do you have anything you wanna add on our color, on Mark? Our color? Uh, no, it's amazing, to be honest. I mean, I've used different color lines, but there's never been a color line that I can achieve everything that I possibly want to achieve. Um, and that's, you know, I obviously, Barbara and I both work for Lanza, so we have to like Lanza, but we don't just have to like it because we actually do like it. Well, we love it, so. yes, I love it. But also, you guys, just make note, I switched to Lanza independently before I was an artist. And I loved it so much that I decided to come work for them. So. Yeah. Another thing, like with our reds, you guys, we have this dye technology, especially in our new reds, um, where we put more dye molecules inside of the hair color. And our reds almost look like direct dyes. They're insane. And they last longer than any other reds I've ever seen, so. Okay, so I use you guys a little bit of what I would think is one of my favorite uh, finishing products is a dry texture spray, okay? It's an incredible product. What I like to do is I like to go in, after I curl somebody's hair, I like to go in in each individual curl. I like to do each individual curl and spray it right at the base of that, and then I'll spray it everywhere around that. So and I'm yes, just, he has his clients flip their head over. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Always. So I tell them, then do your best Beyonce. Ooh, look at you. As you can see, that fringe that we, lit, we put in there, that's that nice sweeping fringe. And then we got these curls. And you can see here, there's a lot of texture and a lot of layering going on in her hair. But she's got a nice perimeter where it doesn't look like she's got little, you know, like spider legs hanging out the beyond. <laughs> so, Margo, can you see that? How does it look? Absolutely gorgeous. And we'll do a nice little photo shoot with her. Yeah, and we'll throw you guys up a finished look a finished on her. Look, exactly. And what did you spray before you curled? What did I spray before I curled? I didn't spray anything, actually. I used, everything that I used, you guys, was our healing oil. This was went, went from wet to dry. And then I used our design foam, okay? So these two products I used in probably like 95% of my clients, okay, from going wet to dry. And I didn't spray anything in her. In did her you do the smooth down spray? Yeah, you did. Yeah, well, no, the smooth down spray is I think that's to what make they were sure referring to. She doesn't have any flyaways or any frizz in her hair, okay? 
Also, when, like I said, we're doing dry uh, haircuts here at Evolution, we're not gonna be doing any blow dry styling for a while. So um, I just wanna make note, you guys, it's important to use a heat protection even when their hair is dry. You don't know if they put a heat protection on before they came in. So that smooth down spray or even using that oil to prep the hair for the heat is a must. So what do you guys think? There's the finished look, Mark's modern mid-length haircut. And then just a little recap here on my mannequin. We did a little open air balayage, leaving the pockets of depth, doing hand painting. And then we also did a hairline foil pivoting to horizontal, 10 foils, leaving out the ends, and then painting on the tails just to brighten up those ends. So. All right, guys. If you guys want, you can make sure to follow us, you guys, on our Instagram. Usually I'd have a very pretty PowerPoint when I do my classes, but hey, this is Zoom season, as I call it, all right? So we got Margot.Therese, and we also have myself, Mark Dolan, too. Um, follow us on our Instagrams, you guys, if you want to know anything more about Lonzo or us personally. Why don't you turn that around so we can both be in the camera? I don't know how to do that. We could do that. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, you guys. Right, there we are. So we're just going to close it out here. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, I know this is a crazy, hectic time, but we're so thankful that we get to have a community like Hairbrain that, you know, make sure that they are looking out for their artists and also all the hairstyles all over the world, you guys. We love you guys. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you guys soon, okay? Bye, guys. Bye, guys.